What's going on guys? Car Review Guys here. My name is AJ. This week we have a, another press car. This is the 2025 Toyota Crown Signia. This is the uh, limited trim level. You could also get it in the XLE. Uh, if you are new to my channel, over 22,000 subscribers. Thank each and every one of you. All right, so jumping right into this, that way if you are new, so you can kind of skip through whatever you would like, we're going to start with cinematic, usually 60 seconds or less. Then we're gonna go around the exterior, talk through some of the things that you would wanna know, right? Stats, figures, stuff like that. Then we're gonna jump on the interior, take a look at that. Then we will be taking it on a drive. So without further ado, let's get right on into it. Let's roll. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that cinematic. Alrighty, let's start with some of the stats and figures here. This Crown Signy is a 2.5 liter, four cylinder, pushing 240 horsepower and 288 pound feet of torque. That is combined with the hybrid system. Transmission is an ECVT, drivetrain is all wheel drive. Curb weight comes in at around 4,210 pounds. It's gonna be pushing it from zero to 60 in about seven seconds flat. MPG is very impressive for the size of vehicle, in my opinion. 39 city, 37 highway with a combined average of 38 MPGs. Touching on vehicle dimensions, 16.2 feet in overall length. Width is about 6.2 feet and ground clearance is 6.7 feet. Pricing starts around $43,590. That is on the base, AKA the XLE, which is still super nice. And the tester today is the Limited. And with the options, it is looking at $52,515, including the destination charge. While we are here in the rear, uh, let's go ahead and pop the rear here. Just press the button right underneath the O. Up it will go. Wow, it rhymed and I was not trying to be Dr. Seuss there, but nonetheless, taking a look in the rear, you do have a good amount of space back here. Uh, and then you do have these little pools which you can throw the seats down. Located right here, I will put on the screen the actual cubic feet with the seats up and down. While we're on the exterior, some things you may or may not notice. Wiper is down here at the bottom. It is not tucked up there. You can kind of see right in there maybe that is the camera for the uh, rear view mirror. So you can see out there, the backup camera is located down there. Uh, and then you can see along the bottom, you have a gloss black trim. Uh, also you have four door. So all four keyless entry, that's super, super nice. And then we are moving around, just taking a look here at the wheels. It does have Bridgestones there, 235, 45, 21. So they are a really, really good size. Uh, the front windshield, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see on camera, you can kind of see a line like through here. Hopefully it shows up on camera, it's so bright, I cannot see through the camera, but nonetheless, uh, it is a heated windshield as well. You can see this one does have located right there. That is the uh, optional uh, dash cam, and then up there is more of like the sensors and all the different stuff uh, for cameras to see. Then taking a look at the front, LED runners definitely looks pretty good. LED headlamps, you have the parking sensors, you have a 360 camera. Uh, so it's under the two mirrors, the front and the rear. You do not get the 360 camera if you go with the XLE. So that is one thing you get on the limited. 
on the Limited, the other differences are panoramic roof, which we will show. Uh, and then JBL speakers is another one, and then a few different safety features, but overall, fairly, fairly similar. It just depends on what you're looking for. If you're new to my channel, I am five foot nine. I test getting in every single vehicle and I try to keep everyone in mind. Okay, here we go. So stepping in, don't have to duck much. Pretty comfortable to get into the rear, actually. Uh, the step up is not high. It's like a perfect height. And then let's take a look at the door materials as we were in here you have heated rear seats as already mentioned jbl get rid of that glare sorry about that and then you've got soft soft touch soft touch and then up here this is kind of like a rubberized material uh you have seat back pocket there and it is really soft two vents you have your two usb c's pocket there as well here in the center pull down you've got two cup holders and as I already mentioned, there is a panoramic roof. I don't have it open at the moment. We'll touch on that. Now, headspace, probably, I don't know, about two inches. This is where I drive and we've got, I can barely touch. So I would say roughly eight inches, somewhere in that region. So, and then as far as the seat, it actually leans back just a little bit. So it's actually quite comfortable back here from a, a sitting position. Let's go ahead and jump into the front here. Super easy, super easy. Taking a look, you can see it has memory seating on the door. You have nice little bezels on the window switches. You have uh, power folding mirrors, mirror adjustments, lock unlock, all of this soft touch similar to the rear. Up here is more like a rubberized. Overall, nice design. As mentioned, it is a heated windshield, automatic high beams as well. And then taking a look at the steering wheel, shut the door, uh, you have your volume control right here. This is gonna control the menu out in front of us. So if we just click there, there it goes. I've got a set on like a, I'm trying to get rid of this for you. There you go, the glare. It's on like a map at the moment in the middle. There's some different settings you can go through. No heads up display as an option. Then up here is the digital rear view mirror. You can turn it on or you can turn it off, whatever you prefer. Coming back down here one more time, uh, on the right hand side, you have all of your cruise control settings. You do have lane centering when cruise control is set. And it of course has adaptive cruise control. And pretty much any newer Toyota Lexus will have this exact setup. Um, and I did make a short on this, but just so you guys are aware, if you have your screen that looks like this, not just this vehicle, maybe you did or didn't pay attention, up here in the right hand corner, this little QI, if you can see it right there, it's gray. That means there's no phone charging. If it was blue, then it would be charging. Same thing for Bluetooth. I don't have my phone connected, so it's gray. If it was connected, that would be blue. So just a little tidbit on that. Um, as far as responsiveness goes, we can do a couple here, just touching through them. Seems absolutely fine to me. Let's go ahead and throw it into reverse. And it is crystal clear for that panoramic camera. Again, that cannot be had on the XLE. This is only on the Limited. Moving on down, you've got heated seats. You have the cooled seats as well. And then a wireless phone charger. You have your button down here for the camera. Pretty standard gear shift. Uh, a lot of Lexus have them as well. Over and up is reverse. Over and down is drive. Hit the P for park. And then we've got our different drive modes. So if we select that, you can see there's sport, there is normal, there is eco. And I generally honestly just leave it in normal. That's pretty much where I find myself majority of the time. The seats are nicely done. I do like the way that they look. There are two colors available, this and then a black. I do wish there was a third color though, but other than that, it looks quite nice. Taking a look in the uh, center console here, hopefully the lighting will adjust at least a little bit. You could probably fit like two tissue boxes in there roughly, and it is dual opening from both sides. All right, I think the last thing in the interior, we will go ahead and open the panoramic view so you can see what it looks like whenever it is open you can see in the rear it is quite large you got the little bar in the middle and then kind of a smaller piece here in the front but it does look nice overall i think that's pretty much going to cover everything on the interior uh let's go ahead and get this out on the road and see how it performs as we get this crown signia out on the road 
So my first impressions was honestly seeing the vehicle. I think it looks quite nice. Um, it looks fairly aggressive in the front. I do see some re resemblances to like the new Prius, if you will. There's also some definitely some carryover parts that are in this as well, which makes sense. That's how you get prices down. You mass manufacture, you use as many engineered parts that you have, that's how you cut costs. I'm a supply chain guy, I worked in automotive for a long time, if you didn't know. Uh, I worked for GM uh, at the Corvette plant, I worked for Lucid here in Arizona, uh, and then I've done some other different places, tier one automotive suppliers, stuff like that. So, a lot of people don't really realize that, how many cross componentries are used, and you can definitely tell that is the case in this doesn't take away with how it's nice. Um, just like the new Prius, I think it is really, really nice. They've done a good job and carrying those items over here does not hurt it at all. That actually helps it in my opinion. Um, the other thing that I noticed after spending a little bit of time with it is the different noise categories. I've got three for me is powertrain, you have wind noise, and then you have tire noise. Tire noise is really good. I don't really hear them. Wind noise is also really, really good. The one that I seem to hear the most out of anything on this vehicle uh, would be the powertrain. So I'm gonna just kind of like step on it just a little bit and see if you can hear it. Sometimes it comes through my road mic, sometimes it doesn't, let's see. So I don't know if that shows up or not. In person, you can definitely hear the powertrain, uh, the motor and stuff. It's, it's not like ridiculous, but you can hear it, it is present. Let's go ahead and touch on blind spots. Over to our left, the pillar's on the thicker side, but you can still see back there quite well. Over to our right, really not too much is there, obviously behind the rear seat, maybe just a smidge, but then your mirror can pretty much see, so not much over there. If you have any issues on either side, guess what? It has blind spot monitoring equipped. What has impressed me the most with my time with this vehicle is, is the gas mileage figures but with how much pep in the step this thing actually has. Like, I'm gonna put this thing into sport just for um, a test here. And we're gonna test the all wheel drive system. This I have not done. Let's see how it does just smashing it to the floor, around a turn. Wow. For a vehicle that gets basically 40 MPGs, right? Like, that's crazy. Like, it actually is plenty quick enough for the MPGs. Um, way better than I would expect. Several years ago, if you wanted this kind of MPG, you're gonna be staring in the face of something dog slow. I mean, just slow. And it's not. They're getting the technology now that this thing actually moves. No wheel spin. The all-wheel drive system did amazing right there. Very, very happy with the power to ratio for gas mileage. All right, we are back in normal. We are about to go over the cattle guard at 45 miles an hour, like we do every week for suspension and noise. So let's see how it does. Let's go. Suspension, a little bit better than average. Very, very happy with that. Noise wise, also very, very happy. Like the, the tires are really, really quiet on this vehicle, um, which is a little surprising to me. Usually only the Lexus products are the ones that are this quiet. So for this to be on a Toyota is definitely, definitely impressive. Let's test the safety features, if you will, here. So lane centering, uh, of course, keep your hands on the wheel. You guys know the deal. Nonetheless, it does stay dead center of the lane. Very happy with that as far as adaptive cruise control. Also works quite well. Pretty much the same across Toyotas, right? Again, cross componentry, it's the same software as depending on the year, right? Like they can flash it and make it different stuff, but basically cross used across many um, and it shows it works quite well. I do wish they'd eventually update it um, to where you could use lane centering without cruise control being set. Not a big deal, but I do wish they would eventually do that. This is definitely a vehicle I could see taking on a road trip. The seats are really comfortable after spending some time with it. Um, even in the rear, like I said, it's tilted just a little bit to where you're not like sitting straight up and down. Like you have a little bit of a tilt, just enough to where you would not be uncomfortable. So, and you've got enough room in the back to definitely fit luggage for four people, assuming you're practical. Um, I mean, if you're trying to go on a golf trip, probably not because it's four golf bags plus suitcases and four people that'd be a little a little tight and you'd have to get pretty creative. I don't even know if it'll fit. You guys get the idea, a normal family of four vacation, I could definitely see taking this thing on a road trip and being extremely comfortable. 
All right, let's test the suspension really quick. Put her in sport. We're gonna take this turn at 20 miles an hour and I wanna see how the body roll and everything else is and 20. It's really good, especially being uh, like a crossover SUV type of deal. Like it does not feel like much body roll really at all. I mean, obviously for the size and stuff, there's a little bit, but like, really maintained um, and then like I was accelerating into like coming out of the turn and it really feels like it has good traction um, with this all-wheel drive system so it's quite quite nice now the next video we're gonna be doing is five things to love five things to improve we do that on every single vehicle also on a side note uh, I now have a c7 Corvette again we are gonna be pro charging it doing a bunch of stuff for a build uh, so we're going to be doing a few different things on the channel, seeing what all you guys like. So if you like that kind of thing as well, be sure to subscribe. If not, we have a new press car every single week and we talk through and compare them apples to apples, not apples to oranges. Uh, but over 22,000 subscribers, so thank each and every one of you uh, as you guys continue to join this journey. It is unbelievable and I thank you very much. Again, last time. Next video, five things to love, five things to improve. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. It is a very, very good vehicle, especially if you're looking for something comfortable, yet good on gas. This is definitely a vehicle that I would be looking at. As always, I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.